Shaper is delighted to present our latest software upgrade. So this will download in the background via Wi-Fi. So if you're connected to Wi-Fi, just let it sit for five minutes, then power cycle origin, and you will see it update the firmware. This will bring a bunch of stability improvements, performance improvements, and a few little usability tweaks that we'll run through now that should help you be more productive and uh, confident navigating your workspace and uh, getting jobs done with origin. We'll take a look at those features now. Onto speeds, uh, these enable us to tune our cutting for different material densities and different cutter diameters. So if you have a very thin, flexible cutter that you want to move very slowly, either plunging or uh, movement in X and Y, it's like velocity along the toolpath, the auto mode, we can tune them independently. So, so first we'll look at auto mode. Uh, the default we're used to is 15, and we can turn that down to a very slow speed. So here's five. Uh, these are just the presets. You can enter whatever you like. Plunging at the regular speed, and then Origin behaves as normal, except when we hit Auto and we'll see it move very slowly. So this would be for, as we just mentioned, a small diameter cutter that's very delicate, or hard material, or both. So uh, you can start to uh, tune that to get better quality outcomes and uh, protect your cutters more. Um, then we can do the opposite of that. We can turn up auto mode to 35, which is super fast. So you might use this for uh, modeling foam or something like that, that you just want to get done very quickly. So it behaves as normal until I hit auto mode, and then you'll see it racing along. Uh, and it actually is pretty challenging to keep up. So uh, you wouldn't want that for a, uh, a very delicate job. Uh, put that back to the regular mode, default, um, and then this is the plunge speed. So same principles apply. Uh, the default is 15 IPM, and we can dictate how quickly we move down through the material. So uh, some things like uh, aluminum with an end mill, it can be difficult for Origin for the cutter to actually remove enough material to go down as fast as 15 inches per minute. So we can slow it way down. So uh, this is 2.5, and we're going to plunge here. So it'll go down quickly to the, to the surface and then plunge very slowly once it hits the surface. So here it's doing the equivalent of a half inch travel in the material um, based on where we told it the Z-Touch was. So that's how long it takes to travel half an inch versus the default, which is 15, sorry. Plunge speed of 15, you'll see how quickly that travels. So that enables us to be uh, more delicate, get better outcomes and more predictable behavior uh, to tune our cuts with Origin. Hole drilling is a common undertaking with Origin and we've made it easy to be uh, much more productive now. So it's a helix path, which basically means we uh, spiral down into the material slowly, uh, keeping the bit constantly loaded and uh, cleanly and efficiently removing material all with one click. So uh, Rather than, say, for a three-quarter deep uh, panel, having to do three passes or something and a finishing pass, uh, we can do it all with one click now. Um, and it's as effortless to take advantage of as hitting the helix button. So basically, any shape uh, inside cut uh, that fits within the corrective range is available for helix cutting. And I'll show you how that works. Tap the uh, green button and you'll notice Origin spiraling down to perform the cut all in one go without me having to move the tool. Um, so this should be the, the quickest and cleanest way to uh, take care of your holes. And you'll notice uh, the helix button's actually sticky, so it remains in this mode until I disable it, which means uh, I don't have to go foraging through menus to find this capability. I just highlight a shape, and if I disable it, all inside cuts, the helix is disabled, and if I enable it, all, all tool paths that are fit within this corrective range can be cut this way. So you'll notice this larger shape is not cuttable as a helix because it doesn't fit within the uh, corrective range, but all the others are. So that will see you uh, cutting to the full depth of origin, and the plunge rates can be modulated with speed. So if I turn it up to 35, you'll notice the uh, helix is moving very quickly. You wouldn't want to use this for anything other than maybe modeling foam or something uh, like that, a speed of 35. 
Here's the calculator. Uh, we spend a bunch of time in here uh, acting on our workspace and manipulating things. And we've added a bunch of new features to uh, really tune this up and make it more effective. So uh, we'll run you through those now. We've got our presets as we always have and a lot of the standard stuff. Uh, I'll run you through just a few uh, scenarios that may come in handy. Uh, if, it's, if you open it and you'll notice everything's automatically all selected, if you just start typing, uh, it replaces what was uh, in the little text field. Uh, we can roll back to what was previously done. Then we can do things like add uh, you know, 0.3 inches and you'll see these updating live on the outside there. Uh, and if I choose uh, millimeters, you'll notice we're using, we can have non-homogeneous uh, units at the top there. So 0.01 inches plus 0.3 and then goes done. Uh, that becomes a decimal here, so we can now uh, cut with that. Uh, there's also the ability to make that negative. So I'm now uh, toggling between positive and negative. Uh, we can do things like add a preset. So negative 0.02, da, 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 plus 0.1. Uh, so that enables us to do a lot of things that are actually very powerful. Um, so if I do, say, 0.1 plus 0.05, um, and then we can keep doing that, plus 0.05. Uh, so if you've got presets and things that uh, enable you to step through values that make sense, I think it's very powerful indeed. So the uh, cut history is now a gradient running from uh, zero all the way to 1.7 inches, which is the maximum Z travel origins capable of. So what that means is every time we cut to a depth, in this case, a uh, air cut, uh, it's always going to be the same color. So uh, this means I can look at a glance and recognize that this is an air cut, uh, and then this will be 0.8 uh, inches. While we're here, I'll mention one more thing. You'll notice it's slightly transparent, so uh, we can actually see through and see markings on our, our work surface, uh, even after we've cut a bunch. We can see pockets and other uh, lines that will be on top of our cut history. So uh, you can, you shouldn't have to erase cuts. Basically, they should just be informing you about exactly where you're at. So I'll do a quarter inch cut, and you'll notice none of these colors are changing. Uh, there's a quarter, I'll do a uh, three quarter. So now we're getting quite deep. This is just air cuts, obviously. And then move to the side. So there's the, you know, a pretty significant range of cuts. Now if I do one, that is half inch, and I remove my offset, you'll see another really interesting aspect of this. So you can see the, uh, the cut channel, the gray sort of overlay, is telling me I've moved, uh, the area that's gonna be removed is now uh, meeting my final dimension, because there's no offset. And if I cut here, you'll see this is now a sensible color within that gradation. Uh, as I'm cutting, I can see where I've cut at this depth. And then when I complete and retract, you'll notice anywhere that's deeper uh, occludes this cut. And then anywhere that's shallower, this cut occludes. So you can always see the deepest piece of material you've, you've cut out. Um, so that enables you to visualize exactly where you're at with respect to offsets, everything. Um, that should be a very quick uh, visual overview of where your project's at. We've added some tune-ups to the grid. Um, you'll notice the ability to change our cutter diameter here so we don't have to reference a, another menu uh, off screen. And we also have the ability to control the height of the cutter uh, with manual input. So instead of having to do a touch off after you've say flipped a uh, engraving cutter and then define a depth and plunge to that depth, we can just do it by eye now uh, in a more natural, intuitive fashion. So green is lower, orange is raised, and you can always just look at where the actual uh, tip of your cutter is or your inverted uh, engraving bit in this case. And once you're happy with that, you just go set the probe depth, then it behaves as it did previously. Uh, so you just touch against the edge and we're probing the X axis here and then twice, I'm hitting the green button, and then we do the Y axis. 
Uh, and you'll notice that's given us a clean, accurate one inch grid for us to place shapes in accurately aligned to the edge of our panel.